fish on. Oh yeah. On the net rig, baby. Oh no, don't tell me he got stuck. Oh no, he's just pulling. Oh no! Come on! He's in the weeds! Come on! This is a pretty big one! some line go dang it look all this weed right here he just slammed straight in I'm hoping that with the Ned rig hook got a pretty solid hook set and so even though there's no tension on it hopefully he's still on there oh yeah he's on there oh I'm pulling him in Yes. Come on. Yes. There we go. First fish on the net rig. Are you kidding me? On the net rig. Right there. That was like my fourth cast with this net rig. Oh yeah, we are on the board. I was getting tired of power bait, so I switched over to a Ned rig and we got here pretty early so I didn't do an intro yet. So I was just trying to see if I could catch a fish before I do the intro. And boy was my prayer answered. First one on the board, that's like a 16 incher, 16, 17. It's the 15th of February, it's a Saturday. Today we're just out trout fishing. And so all I'm doing today is because I have been getting so tired of fishing with power bait for trout. Today I'm going to switch it up and use lures. This is what I caught that trout off of. This is called a Ned Rig. And the Ned Rig is probably one of my favorite lures to use. Now the key word here is lures, not bait. Now with lures, you can catch and release trout all day here in Washington because it, if you release them, they don't count towards your limit. If you catch trout with bait, regardless if you keep them or you release them, they count towards your limit. So if you're fishing with bait, like power bait, you can only catch up to five fish a day, regardless if you keep them or you release them, as long as they're legal size. But here, there's no size limit, so any trout really counts towards your limit if you catch them with bait. And honestly, bait works. Um, my cousin and my dad and my uncle over there, they're just using bait, they're bottom fishing. But since I've been bottom fishing for so so long, I went with the old trusty net rig and I just caught that fish off of like my fourth cast. I'm not surprised because I've caught trout off a of net rig before. But the purpose of this is to show that soft plastics are pretty dang lethal when it comes to trout fishing. Because I think when trout, when people talk about trout, people think of either bottom fishing like power bait or worms or they think hard baits like spinners. And among trout fishermen, soft plastics are pretty overlooked. And I was part of that for a long time. And so I'm gonna go over my rig and we're gonna get back to fishing. So my rod is a seven foot two medium fast rod. It's a slightly overkill for a Ned rig, but it's all I have for this fishing, so it works. For my main line, I'm running 10 pound Power Pro braid. And then I have a six pound mono leader tied to my braid using a double uni knot. And then this right here is a one sixth ounce uh, Z-Man Ned rig hook. And you guys can see that little piece of lead right under the, the head is a bait holder. And I prefer that kind of bait holder rather than a, a wire one because it doesn't destroy your, your lure as fast. And so this is just a four inch Senko or four inch worm that I cut in half. And I use a little chartreuse tail just to have it glow out in the middle. And then you're just gonna slip it inside the middle. You're just gonna follow the hook. It's gonna follow it, then you're gonna poke it out. 
and ultimately that's where you're left with jig head up here and then you're warm basically and then you got an exposed hook and that's pretty much what i caught that trout off of i just threw it out there so imagine my hands to the ground all i did was i bounce it and then i just kind of shake it in place and then i just bounce it and shake it in place and that guy picked it up like on my second rotation so we're gonna get back out there and we'll see if we can catch another one so all i'm doing right now is i'm just casting and working the shoreline because ideally that's kind of why i lure fish so that i can move around and just help stay warm and just kind of cover water so we're getting into the big rocks over here so there's a pretty good chance that i might lose my ned rig but over here is pretty deep so there's got to be something over here So I decided to start off with this pumpkin, pumpkin color with the chartreuse tip because I think the chartreuse really stands out in this clear water. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, that's a nice fish. Oh, you picked it up off the bottom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Holy crap, this guy's big. Oh my goodness. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Are you kidding me? Let's go. That's a huge. Oh, sorry. Right there, Ned Rig. Top, top of the mouth. Oh my goodness. Look, he has somebody else's line in him somebody lost this fish and this guy is a beast this guy is gonna turn into fish larb or in Hmong terms it will be la big trout like this I love turning it into fish larb or fish la heck yeah this net rig right here freaking money when it comes to any type of fishing tackle I always like to organize it into these semi-smaller tackle boxes because these, they're more compact and they're more portable versus you have a big old tackle box that you always need a backpack. So like right here, I don't, I don't have my backpack. My backpack is over here where my uncle and my dad and my cousin is fishing. And so all I did was I just pulled out my tackle box and I just said, all I need is net rig, get my rod, and that's about it. And every single time, I find a specific lure or a rig or setup that I really, really like. I always dedicate a little tackle box like this to it. So if you guys look here, I just wrote net rig. And so here, my net rig box is pretty dang simple. So let me pull out my hooks real quick. Right here on the underside, this, is, um, this comes with a box when you buy hooks. And on the inside, I just taped it. And the reason I do this is because I don't fish year round. Trout will have a season throughout the year for me. And then once it's like hunting season, I just forget on my fishing tackle. And then once hunting season is over and I come back to fishing, I am always reminded about what size of hook I'm using. And these are the Z-Man Nedlock hooks. As stated earlier in the video, these types of hooks are my favorite Ned Rig hooks because they're sturdy and I like that bait holder method more than a wire. 
there is only one section where I am dedicated to hooks because I have come to find that one sixth ounce and with a size one hook is the best hook for Ned rigging for how I fish and where I fish. This will vary depending on where you fish and how you fish. And then the rest, there's just a bunch of different color of worms. I have like black here. I have watermelon with red flakes. I've got brown, blue, this like turquoise color. I even got this like shaddy color. And then of course I've got my, uh, my pumpkin with a little chartreuse tip. And so today, the morning bite was the best. Right at first light, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, that was when the fish were really biting. And after that, it was just kind of, wasn't completely dead, but it was so and so fishing. And then after a while, it just turned into a drought. So, decided to pack up, caught two off the net rig, which is more than I could ask for today. Especially since they were pretty, pretty nice trout too. We're going to head back to the car, and I'll see you guys back in the kitchen. All right, so we made it home, and right now I'm gonna show you guys a very simple larb recipe for trout or fish. Now, when you talk about larb or la, every single person tends to have their own unique recipe. I have never seen two people make the same exact recipe. And so that just goes to show you, you can do whatever you want with this dish, add whatever ingredient you want, or take out whatever ingredient you want. So it really comes down to what you want, and what you prefer. So before we go any further, I do want to note that I don't really have the exact measurements for this recipe. It's always just throwing this and throwing that and just combine it all together and just taste it. And if you're, it's not salty enough or it's not spicy enough, then you just add more salt or throw in more chili peppers. It's always just taste as you go, basically. So right here, I already have the ingredients ready to go and just mix, but I'm just gonna talk over and guide you guys through the process of what happened before we got here. So the first thing I did with this trout was I just gutted it and took out the gills. That's all I did. I just washed it clean, wiped it down so that it's dry, and then I put it in the oven and I broiled it on high for about 30 minutes. 15 minutes on one side, and then once that 15 minutes is over, then you flip it over and do another 15 minutes on the other side. Once it's done, then you just pull it out and let it cool down. In the meantime, while it's broiling, you can prepare your ingredients. And then the next part is you take your fish, you lay out on a, I don't know, anything you want. And then you're gonna peel off the skin because with trout or fish in general, once you broil it, that skin should be somewhat crispy and you can kind of just fold it off of the meat. And then you're gonna discard the skin and what you're left with is just a bunch of meat on the skeleton of the fish. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick through the bones and try to separate all the bones from the meat. Once you get your meat, you just throw it into a little bowl or something, and then you throw your bones away, but just take your time through it. You don't wanna skip over this part. So after you have separated your meat from your bones, you're just gonna take your meat and put it on a cutting board, and you're just gonna mince it with your knife. And then once you're done with that, just gather your ingredients, and you are gonna be right where I am. So this right here is right around two pounds of meat. It's not including the bowl. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sea salt, you know, put some sea salt in there. Now you're just gonna put some to taste. A good rule of thumb is if you're not sure how much ingredients you're supposed to put in, always go on the lighter side because it's a lot easier to add more ingredients later on than try to take out ingredients, which is basically impossible. So if you're not sure, go light on your ingredients and if it's not tasty enough, if it's not salty enough, it's not spicy enough, then you can add more. You don't wanna to add too much now and then find out later that it's way too salty or it's way too spicy and stuff like that. Some roasted rice powder. We're just gonna do about four, four spoons. Just gonna do four spoons like that. And then we're just gonna take some black pepper. This is just, you know, do it to however you like. We're gonna put on some plastic gloves so we can mix it around. Some people, they like to mix it around with like a spoon or a spatula of some sort. But for me, when you make la, you gotta always just do it with your hands. And we're just gonna mix all this around. And then here, in this little bowl, we have some minced lemongrass and some minced lime leaves. Just gonna throw all this in here. Let's 
just going to mix this in as well. And then we're going to take half a lime, at least for the amount I have here, I'm just going to start with half. I'm just going to squeeze. All right, so that's about half of a lime, a small lime I should say. This is just six chili peppers. Again, if it's too spicy for you, don't add as much. If it's not spicy enough, add more chili peppers. Now, some people like to add fish sauce, and you absolutely can, but my dad is not a fan of fish sauce, and I'm making this for my dad and the family later when my dad gets home, so I'm not gonna add fish sauce, but you absolutely can add fish sauce. All right, so before we throw in our greens, I'm just gonna taste this real quick, just to make sure that you know everything's right. Maybe a little bit more salt, but that's, that's pretty good. Gonna add a little bit. Now we're just gonna mix it in again. And we're just gonna taste a little bit more. That is delicious. Alright, so here we just have some some green onions or scallions, and we just have some chopped cilantro. We're just gonna throw everything in here. And you're just gonna stir. And again, my bowl is not big enough. So I'm just going to kind of be careful here. And that's what your end result should somewhat look like. Again, it's never done until you keep tasting it and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to taste some more. Oh, that's so good. The spice is spot on. I'm just going to throw a little bit more lime juice in here. Just add a little bit more flavor to it. Hopefully this is the final touch and we'll be good to go. Mmm. That is perfection. All right, well, there you go. That's the finished product. Um, this is probably one of my favorite recipes to make with trout. Um, the other fish that I prefer over trout with larb is crappie. I love crappie for larb, but trout is a trout is pretty dang good too. So um, this recipe, it's a lot more complicated than some of the recipes I've shown in my other catch and cooks. This was bound to happen. So um, just gonna take a spoon, just. Add a little bit because I'm actually not going to eat right now. I actually cooked this for the family, so that's delicious. I don't want to eat anymore because if I eat right now, then the family might not get any, but that's one of my favorite dishes. I just wanted to quickly show you guys a recipe that you guys can do with trout and essentially almost any fish, to be honest. We made, we've made we made lard with a lot of different fish. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video, and maybe if you guys want, you guys can give uh, this recipe here a try. In the description below, I'll try to provide a rough estimate of how much ingredients I use. That way, it can kind of guide you guys through the recipe rather than just throwing everything randomly. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. i got to go do homework now. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh my gosh. I literally felt my net really slipping too, but I thought it was a fish.